Hello, my name is Monica Jones. I'm the Chief Data Officer for the HDI UK Hub for Cancer DataCan. I'm also Associate Director for HDI UK North and Executive Lead for the Auction Number Care Record for Population Health. Today, I'm going to talk to you about COVID and cancer and the use of real-time data and open standards. The session will cover the background to Health Data Research UK and local healthcare record exemplars in the UK. It'll explore the need for linked longitudinal records, shared care records uh, to achieve safe and effective care, as well as service and quality improvement. <clears throat> I'm going to use the example of COVID-19 and its impact that it's had on NHS cancer services and outcome to demonstrate the need for real time data and open standards such as open EHR and clinical terminology such as SNOMED CT to tackle the significant healthcare challenges we're all facing. Health Data Research UK has been in existence for nearly a couple of years now. It's, it's funded uh, by central government through the Industry Strategy Fund. And essentially, there are three strands to <coughs> what it is trying to achieve. Um, in the middle, we've got in the need to improve healthcare data um, by creating a number of research hubs, of which DataCan is one of those. The aim is to unite health data from, from the Research Alliance, mainly NHS organisations, and with the patient and public um, consultation and, and, and trust, uh, it's very important to make sure that any data that is being used for research um, is, is handled in the most appropriate way um, and, and de-identified and complies with all the information governance. Uh, and to that end, the, um, there is the Health Data Research Innovation Gateway, which is a way of, of discovering um, data um, and, and making that more accessible to users, uh, the NHS, charities, government, public and, and industry. So DataCan in particular, um, I've tried to put together this uh, our vision on a page. And it's very much about that linked longitudinal records for research that I talked about earlier. Uh, the patient is always at the centre. And as we know that uh, um, cancer is a complex disease and therefore there are many different sources in, uh, of, of data and, and clinical records that are appropriate to include in, in that longitudinal record. So you can entirely understand the pathway and improve access, improve quality and ensure fair value. So let's focus in on, on Yorkshire and Humber in particular. So uh, our region has a, a population of approximately 5.8 citizens. Um, and you can see some of the health challenges on, on this slide here. Um, and through the central funding from NHS England, um, we developed um, over the last two to three years a, a, a clinical record um, that would actually join up um, the, the system. And we call that through our system of systems. Now, the only way you're going to be able to achieve that is by the use of, of, of good interoperability um, and, and, and open standards. So what we're trying to, to develop and, and, and have delivered is the opportunity <coughs> for, for clinicians to spend more time with people in, in, in their care, to improve that connectivity and integration, provide better decision making and, and reduce the number of tests. And particularly for cancer pathways, this is, except, is really important. So population health management is a <clears throat> the opportunity to be able to, to focus on the, the health of an entire nation. It recognises that health and well-being is more than about just being with disease. Uh, and this model in terms of uh, defining the system capabilities for population health management is one that we've used across Yorkshire and Humber. It's cyclical, so it, 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 it looks at defining the population using population segmentation, identifying care gaps, stratifying those risks and engaging with patients and managing care and measuring outcomes. <coughs> so let's get on to the use of open standards. So the, the region has adopted SNOMED CT for the standardisation of vocabulary. And this technical architecture diagram here shows how we have uh, aimed to, to, to use open standards uh, through a parallel persistent engine complying with open EHR. <coughs> this is still work in progress, but we have actually now connected up uh, for direct care and for population health management, our systems mainly using HL7 Fire as the interoperability standard uh, through subscription and integration layers. Um, we continue to, 
to, to work on, on extending that and the use of OpenEHR uh, using um, architect query languages and defining those. And as time moves on, new architects can be developed with time and the provision uh, that is associated with that. One important thing around the use of open standards is clinical ownership. Prior to my role at, uh, at DataCan, I was a CIO at Rotherham Foundation Trust. We implemented SNOMED CT some years ago um, and actually were very much a, an early adopter uh, to implement the national objectives. Um, what we learned uh, through that experience is that, that actually um, you must have that clinical ownership. It must be driven from um, the, <coughs> the, the, the clinical staff working closely with colleagues across a trust, across a, a, a place and across a region in order to, to improve the, the quality of data that is recorded. <coughs> and actually we saw significant improvement in terms of data entry and clinical recording. And here's just some snapshots uh, of the, the, the um, data entry uh, forms um, and, and, some of the, um, and some of the benefits that we had. And most importantly, it's also about delivering benefits for the patient. We found that through improved visualization of activity has, has led to better care. We've got a number of, of YHCR examples showing trust cutting waiting times and, and, and dropping the number of, of missed appointments by actually understanding the system throw, flow throughout the system. And obviously, as patients are discharged from hospital, making sure that, um, that, that GPs and the patients know exactly what treatment they have, what follow up they need uh, and to continue that care in the community. So we've developed a, a platform for analytics, predictive modeling, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Uh, it's, it, it takes the data, as I described, um, <clears throat> from the system of systems and hosts that on a Google Cloud platform. Um, there are a number of integration services, analytics services, and you can see this on, on this slide. We've developed a number of products that sit, sit over the top of that. And the aim is that then we have a, a, a set of, of of developers, data engineers, analysts, data scientists, and visualization developers um, that can actually produce dashboards, do more complex um, statistical analysis using tools such as Python and, and, and RStudio um, in order to make sure that actually we can, we can address some of the challenges. Um, and the consumers of this are <coughs> commissioners, health providers, clinicians, health and social care workers. So the progress to date and future plans, you can see on here during 2020, we finalized the build and the test of our PHM platform, improved the integration with the wider flow. Um, <clears throat> and actually we've upskilled uh, the, the, the first of, uh, our, of our um, digital academy um, for 40 Yorkshire and Humber delegates, and we'll be repeating that over the next um, few years. So this is just an example of one of the strategic analytical <coughs> segmentation model um, looking at sort of geomapping and, and in particular looking at, at uh, primary care networks uh, and their responsibility through the NHS long term plan to drive forward um, population health management at place. So finally, I just wanted to give the example of sort of COVID-19 and cancer to, to demonstrate the need for real time data and open standards. Um, early in sort of March, we were starting to see the effect of, <coughs> of, of, of COVID on cancer in terms of, of, of the services that were being um, reduced, um, but also the risks associated with, uh, with uh, catching COVID uh, for cancer patients. Um, we realized that actually we needed real-time data, that some of the national data sources that were available were, were just not timely enough. And you can see that uh, across Leeds, London and, um, and Northern Ireland, um, <coughs> the drop-off in activity that happened um, and, and how worrying that was, particularly around sort of urgent referrals for early diagnosis and chemotherapy. <coughs> so we set up a real-time data network and actually, these are some of the sort of the summary uh, component parts in terms of presentation, diagnosis and treatment, um, all of which are, 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 are very concerning uh, for somebody with cancer. <clears throat> the latest guidance from NHS England from Simon Stevens that came out at the end of uh, July focused on the phase three, <clears throat> three recovery 
and the real importance of, of kick-starting cancer services. Um, you can read more about this through the papers that have been published on our DataCan website. And finally, we're starting to see the two-week wait referrals sort of pick up, um, but there is still this bow wave of, of patients that, that are missing in the system. Only through the use of real-time data and actually having good quality data, without which you, you can't have quality without standards, I've always said that, um, then we, we will be able to address these concerns and, and actually get back to pre-COVID standards. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that presentation. Uh, if you want further uh, information, my details are there and uh, I look forward to, to, to speak, speaking to you soon. Bye.